Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan. Here are your latest news headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has chosen the theme of Towards an Ever Wider We for the 107th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. The day will be observed by the Catholic Church on the 26th of September of this year. As per a communique issued by the Migrants and Refugees section of the Dicastery for Integral Human Development, Pope Francis's message for the day will quote, stress the importance of being attentive to the entire human family through an inclusive church that reaches out and is capable of creating communion in diversity. In order to help Christians in their preparation for the day, the Migrants and Refugees section of the Dicastery will launch a communications campaign providing monthly multimedia aids, information material and reflections by theologians and experts that expand upon the theme and sub-themes chosen by the Holy Father. Expressing support and concern for the plight of people who were forced to leave their homes, the Catholic Church first observed the World Day of Migrants and Refugees in 1914. On Saturday, February the 27th, thousands of Lebanese people rallied in support of Maronite Patriarch Bechara Boutros al-Rai. This follows criticism of his call for a UN-led international conference to address the country's economic and political crises. Lebanon has been in a state of turmoil since an explosion in Beirut in August of last year, which left more than 200 people dead. The country's government resigned in the aftermath of the blast which was caused by the detonation of 2,750 tonnes of ammonium nitrate stored unsafely at the city's port for years. The Maronite Patriarch had called for the intervention of the UN in rebuilding the nation. This was strongly criticised by Hassan Nasrallah, current Secretary General of the Lebanese political party Hezbollah. He alleged that the Maronite Patriarch's call to revive the political state of the nation would lead to foreign interference or even foreign occupation. In support of the Patriarch, thousands of people carrying Lebanese flags and portraits of the Patriarch gathered at the Maronite Patriarchate in Bekerke, north of Beirut. On Friday, February the 26th, the US Supreme Court ruled 63 in favour of allowing indoor worship in California Santa Clara County with 20% capacity. Although the court had reversed a ban on indoor worship in California by an order on February the 5th and permitted indoor services at 25% capacity, Santa Clara County disregarded the injunction. Thereafter, five churches in the county took legal action. Bishop Oscar Cantu of the Diocese of San Jose released a statement expressing his satisfaction at the court's decision. The Diocese of San Jose is home to more than 600,000 Catholics. As a result of escalating violence against protesters by the military junta in Myanmar, at least 18 people were killed and 30 people injured on Sunday, February the 28th. Hundreds of people have been detained across the country. Condemning the violence, UN Human Rights spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani said, quote, The people of Myanmar have the right to assemble peacefully and to demand the restoration of democracy. These fundamental rights must be respected by the military and police, not met with violent and bloody repression. The UN has also called on the military junta to immediately halt the use of force against peaceful protesters. Meanwhile, an image of a Catholic nun in Myanmar pleading with the police not to arrest the protesters has been circulating. Sister Anne Nu Thong of the Congregation of St. Francis Xavier was photographed pleading with security forces not to attack young demonstrators. The Apostolic Nuncio to Iraq, Monsignor Mitya Leskovar, has tested positive for COVID-19. The diagnosis comes as the Catholic Church in Iraq makes final preparations for Pope Francis's much-awaited visit to the country. The information was shared by Father Erwin Lengel, the Secretary of the Nunciature, in a tweet. The symptoms of the Nuncio are reported to be mild and he continues to work during his self-isolation. The Apostolic visit of Pope Francis is scheduled to take place from March the 5th to March the 8th. The Holy Father will be visiting the historic cities of Erbil, Mosul, Karakosh and Baghdad. Finally, the Philippines' historic Basilica Minore del Santo Niño and the image of infant Jesus popularly known as the Santo Niño de Cebu will be declared as national cultural treasures. René Escalante, the chair of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, made the announcement while launching a three-part webinar series. He said, quote, This stature is the highest recognition the state can give to such historically and culturally significant heritage of the Filipino people. He announced that the official declaration would take place on April the 14th of this year, as the Catholic Church in the Philippines celebrates the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the country. The miraculous image of the infant Jesus was gifted by Spanish explorer Ferdinand Magallan to the ruler of Cebu, Raja Humabon, in 1521. And those are your latest news headlines for now. God bless you and Shalom.